Should I learn Swift UI or UI Kit? It's a great question. In this video, I'm going to talk about five different things to keep in mind when learning a new technology and making a decision like this. Hey, what's up? My name is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I have worked for Apple, Microsoft, and GoPro, and I'm going to dive into the answer that's going to help you think about how to approach this problem. Let's get started. Why iOS? I'm going to throw a question back at you. This is really important. You need to understand why you're doing this. So why do you want to learn iPhone development? Or why do you want to learn Mac OS development? Or why do you want to learn Apple um, Vision development? So what is, what is motivating you to do this? Is it because you have an indie app idea? That's going to be very different than if you want to get a job. So if you have an indie app idea, what you need to do is start with Swift UI. I don't see any reason to go into UI kit. There are so many new features that are coming out in Swift UI and you don't have any sort of legacy code that you have to worry about supporting. If you're building a brand new app, you can start fresh with the latest version of iOS, iOS 18 in 2024 or 2025. And you can target the latest and greatest APIs. You can use the latest features. You don't have any legacy code to worry about. So you don't really need UI kit. Now there are situations where you will need UI kit, but we'll get to that in a little bit. If your goal is to get a job in iPhone development or Mac development or vision OS development, whichever platform or technology you want to work with, there's going to be legacy code. There's going to be objective C code. There's going to be Swift code that is UI kit driven. It might be in storyboard files that are super gnarly with lots of auto layout constraints or it might be programmatic UI in Swift, UI, in Swift or Objective-C. You might have programmers that prefer Objective-C over Swift because it's just easier. It's not as complex. It just works. It doesn't keep changing. So depending on if you want to get a job, you're going to need to learn both of these. But I would still start with Swift UI. Swift UI is easier to write. It's easier to get started with. There are some issues with it but you can get a lot of progress very quickly with Swift UI that takes a lot more effort in UI kit. And if I'm being honest right now, I start all of my stuff with Swift UI. So that's going to be our second point that we talk about. All of my new code is Swift UI. I actually, I don't think I've written a UI kit um, file in a while. I did when I was at GoPro. Um, let me think, maybe two years ago. It was before we did the whole refactor to make the camera chooser uh, rewrite so that it could work in Bluetooth mode. So we connect and remote control cameras um, over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I rewrote all of the UI uh, for that main component in Swift UI, and we didn't really use any UI kit after that. Once we migrated over to that technology, we really stopped using UI kit except on our legacy code that we had to support with either bug fixes or new features just to make it work. So I would start with Swift UI no matter what, because it's going to be easier to get something out the door, easier to get something on the screen. And the faster you can iterate, the faster you can prototype, the better for app development, because it's that continuous cycle of see something, change it, see something, change it. That's how all of my app development works. The app that I'm using right now, this is not Keynote. This is my own app that I built on Mac using Swift UI is helping me run this presentation. And I built it in Swift UI because it's easier for me to express my ideas now in Swift UI. There are downsides though. And so we'll talk about the third point I have here. You have to fill gaps with Swift UI using UI kit or app kit, whichever framework you're working with or whichever platform you're on, not all of the features are exposed. So you're either going to have to <clears throat> re-implement something from scratch, or you're going to be able to leverage something that's been already written, battle tested by Apple in UI kit or app kit. And you'll be able to wrap that up in Swift UI so that you can use those advanced features. An example of this is the slider in Swift UI does not allow for customization of the thumb image or the track height. 
if you have a design from a designer and you want to customize those, you have to either rewrite a slider in Swift UI yourself and implement all of the accessibility features if you want your app to be usable by lots of people, or you can wrap up a UI slider from UI Kit in Swift UI and expose the features that you need access to so that you can customize the slider presentation. So sometimes you need to reach back to these other frameworks because Swift UI still doesn't expose all of the same customization and features that UIKit has. UIKit is a very big framework. It provides a lot of great functionality. And so you would be at a loss to not leverage some of that in your own apps. So fill gaps with UIKit. The other thing I want to talk about is you really need to learn both over time. You don't have to learn them all up front, but as you're working on your projects, as you're working on shipping apps, as you're working on code for different companies, you're going to learn bits and pieces of these different things. And this is where it's most important for you to keep a developer log. And so that is my fifth point that I wanna talk about. No matter which technology you use, if you want to remember what you learn, you have to write it down. And so I write my notes in Markdown. This whole presentation is created using Markdown, which is just a simple markup language that uses hashtags for heading levels and asterisks for talking points. And you can have code snippets, you can have links, and this allows you to remember things. So if you're trying to learn UIKit or if you're trying to learn Swift UI, write a little blog post, write a little description of what you just learned. Describe a chunk of code. If something was really hard to figure out or you ran into a bug, describe the problem and describe the answer. Writing this down is going to help you remember it. It's going to help you articulate the problem. Sometimes if you're having a problem, just writing down the question will help you figure out the answer. So <clears throat> no matter what framework you're learning, if you're learning something new, you have to take notes. It's so important for the learning process. All right, so that's all I have today. We talked a lot about the question at hand. So if you want to get started on iOS or macOS development, the question was, should I learn SwiftUI or UIKit? My answer is it depends, and it's more of an order of operations question. Which should you learn first? And my answer in 2024 with Xcode 16 and iOS 18 is Swift UI. It's going to be a lot easier to prototype, get something out the door. Your goal is to ship products, ship ideas. And to do that, you can use Swift UI to execute faster. If this was helpful, hit the like button. Thanks for watching. And if you have any other questions similar to this, ask them down below if I sparked an idea or a topic that you want me to drill deeper into as an experienced developer, comment down below and I will make another video answering that question. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.